So now we're going to create a choose your own adventure game. A really simple, quick and fun game. So start with, we name it, we delete the scratch cat, and on the first backdrop we add the title of the game as well as your name. So choose your own adventure game created by me. Okay, now we're going to add a simple image to your start screen. I'm just going to quickly draw a house. You can draw what you want. We can change this later. We can make it a lot prettier. And now I'm going to add the first sprite, which is the start button. So I'm going to use the same background color as my start screen. Position it where I want, and let's get ready to code. Okay, now the code on these buttons is quite simple. We need to tell it what to do when we start the game, or when the flag is clicked. We need to tell it what to do when it turns to the screen which we want it to be on. We need to tell it what to do when the sprite is clicked. So first of all, when the flag is clicked, always hide. When it turns to the background which we want it to appear on, so if this one is the start screen, we want it to show and go to the X, Y coordinates where we've placed it, and that's already there for you. And lastly, we want to say when the sprite is clicked, well, we want it to disappear and switch to the next backdrop. Okay, now we're going to start the second backdrop, which I call the introduction for this, and that's where we set the scene for the game. So we'll add a little sentence saying what's happening, and that's it really. Now that we've created another backdrop, which is the introduction, I can go back to my start button script and say when this sprite clicked, switch to introduction. Now the next sprite we're going to make is exactly the same process as we use for the start button. We're going to tell it where to go, what screens to show on, and what happens when it is clicked. This sprite is the next button, so as go to next page, position to where you want it to go. Now let's go look at the code. The three events, what to do when the flag is clicked, what to do when the sprite is clicked, and when the backdrop switches to the screen. We want it to hide on every screen apart from when it goes to introduction. We want it to go to this X, Y coordinate here. And when the sprite is clicked, we want it to change to the next backdrop, which is problem one. Now, as I said, this is a choose your own adventure game. So we need to make backdrops which have problems on them. So problem one, state a sentence which has got a problem on it, which we give two or three choices at the end. Now, within this game, you can have as many different choices and problems as you wish. They can go off in tangents, they can go off all over the place. To keep it simple, just start having choice one, right or wrong. The right answer goes to the next choice, the wrong answer goes to the game over screen. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Keep it simple. The more choices you have, the more difficult it is to manage. Okay, now all of your backdrops need to have some code. When the flag is clicked, switch to the start button, and when it gets to any of the end screens, you actually want it to reset back to the start screen by just saying wait one, two, three, or however long you want it to be, then switch to start screen. That'll reset our game. Now if you see now, I'm just adding the solution or the win screen, and I've created the end screen. And now I've linked it through to that. Um, you can have as many different solutions as you want, as many different endings as you want, like a choose your own adventure book, but I suggest to start with you just have one of each. And you can have as many problems as you want, but just start with one or two. And remember, on each problem, just outline what the problem is for you to have your choices. Okay, now we're making our sprites, which are the choices. When you have a problem, you need to have two sprites, which are buttons, which are choices below. A, B, yes, no, right, wrong, and you need to label them very correctly. So, once you've made your sprites, you've placed them in the position you want it to be, and you've named them. Naming is very important. Then we need to go into coding. 
Now to code these sprites, it's almost the same as the start button sprite or the next button sprite, but we're going to add one more choice because we need to tell the sprite what to do if the other sprite on the page is selected. So we need to have when flag is clicked, hide, when backdrop switches to, problem one in this case, show and go to X, Y. If the sprite is clicked, if it's the correct sprite, it goes to the next choice. If it's the incorrect sprite, it goes to the backdrop. And then if the other sprite is clicked, it'll go to a backdrop, which we need to tell it to hide when it's on that backdrop. Once you get the hang of it, it's really quick and really simple. Can be a bit of a tricky thing to work out to start with. Once you've got it working, test it. Test it, test it, test it again to make sure that it is working. So your sprites should show on the page you want it to show on. They should go to the page you want to go when they are clicked. And they should disappear when the other sprite on the page is clicked. Okay, so on to problem two, and we're doing the same steps which we took in problem one. We're creating two sprites, which we will label, we will name, we will place in the right position. There'll be a yes and a no, or a right or a wrong, or a choice A, choice B, and then from there we need to add the code. Okay, just like with problem one, We've got to give each of these two sprites four events or four sets of coding blocks. What happens when the flag is clicked? We want it to hide. When the backdrop switches to problem two, we want it to show and go to X, Y coordinates, which we've already set. Then if this sprite is clicked, we want it to change to the backdrop, which is set for it. If it's the correct choice, it goes to the next problem or the win screen. If it's the wrong choice, it goes to the game over screen and vice versa for the second sprite. Okay, so once you're sorted, we've got our six backdrops, we've got our six sprites, and we run through and test it. Once this is working, and you know that the right choices and the wrong choices are working, you can add a problem three, a problem four, and the sprites which go with it, and so on and so forth. This is a great game to make. You can base it on a video, you can base it on a movie, you can base it on a book which you enjoy reading, or you can just make up your own story to go along with it. Okay, have fun, give it a go, and send me any questions you've got. Take care, bye-bye.